Hello, my name is Dominic Spizak, and this is a collection of monologues. I hope you enjoy. Look, you guys, I just had a bad experience with a wolf, all right? So I was up in the Catskills. It was at one of those Relive Woodstock festivals, except the band sucked. So I was sleeping in this tent with this fat chick and she was snoring like a bull. I mean, like, like she, like I couldn't sleep because of it, but you know, it was her tent. So I didn't make much of an issue about it. So anyways, it's the middle of the night and I hear something sniffing around the tent. And I figure that uh, I should just ignore it. It's probably a raccoon or something. But then all of a sudden I hear this water trickling. And then I realize, I realize that this thing is, is pissing on the tent. And, and she must not have set it upright because it's leaking right through. So I get up, I get out of the tent, ready to chase the bastard off. But right there in front of me is the biggest fucking wolf I've ever seen. And I was just thinking, well, that's it. I'm dead. Like this thing's eye to eye with me. It's got its teeth showing. And plus I was naked. So it's got the whole smorgasbord to go on. But then out of nowhere, the fat chick wakes up. She comes out with a crossbow. I don't know where the hell she got it from. She screams, fires. She missed the wolf. I think she might have hit a car. And I think her name was Patsy, if I remember. But anyways, the wolf got spooked and just ran off. And after that, I figured, that's it. No more will I be part of this, you know, one with nature shit, you know? Give me suburbia or give me death. So then he tries to recover and act like he didn't just say what he just said. You know, tries to coast over entirely. And she's just standing there like mouth agape, like, what the fuck did you just say? And he's just all shitting his pants and like, uh, let's, anyways, what I meant was, see what I really meant was blah, blah, blah and whatnot. And as he's fumbling around, she's just looking at him like, oh my God. And then she rears back and wham! She rears back and sucker punches this guy right in the face. And everyone just goes quiet in the room. And they're all looking at him and he's making this little whimpering sound. Well, everyone except for me was looking at him because I'm looking at her. And I noticed something about her. It's a really really tiny thing you can barely see it but I see this little snarl like her lip is slightly curved up like this this animalistic thing going on and I'm just like well that's it I need to meet her this woman needs to be in my life every single day I mean I mean she really beat the shit out of this guy and then that little snarl how do you not go up to this woman and introduce yourself? Do you like Bruce Willis? I don't understand him. I mean, here he is married to Demi Moore. You know, between them, they have all the money in the world. And he still lets her take her clothes off for all to see. You tell me how that's different from Lori Axelrod. Lori's this, this guy I used to work with at the plant, carried a picture of his wife with him in this wallet. And she's naked on a pool table in his rec room, you know, like to see what I got. You know, the look on her face of just take the goddamn picture already, will you? And he whips it out being all like, this is mine. You can look, but you can't touch. Like I would want to, you know. Like you see her in the supermarket trying to decide what brand of spaghetti sauce to buy. And I have to keep myself from saying, lady, I've seen your bush. So now, how is that different from Bruce Willis? You know, he goes to his wife's newest movie premiere and you got all these stars around him like 
like Danny DeVito, Sharon Stone, Denzel Washington, and you got the media, and they're all just sitting in this crowded theater, and there's Demi, 40 feet high, some dude has his hands all up on her, end of movie, he gives Demi a kiss, and is like, good work, honey. You know, I think they do it just to piss us off, you know? Kind of like Lori. You can look, but you can't touch. You know, if you go out in a raincoat and flash people, you get arrested. If you do it at a strip club like, say, Renee's, you're this pathetic thing one step up from a hooker. But if you get paid $7 million to wave your stuff around, you can pretend that you're some sort of artist. And people wonder what's wrong with this country. <laughs> when I told my father I wanted to be a ball player, it was like telling him I wanted to be a vagrant, you know? We argued about it for a long time. But then, then I got the chance to play for a team in Alabama. They were semi-pro, hardly paid you nothing. And he let me go. All my life, he had been like a glass mountain, you know? You couldn't climb him. Always saying no, demanding more. And then here he was saying, go on, go to Alabama, try baseball. For him, it must have been like saying, go and try a life of crime. He also said one more thing. He said, don't go home a failure. He was dead long before he knew if I was a failure or not. But he wasn't dead in me, though. You know, I might have been a 280 hitter my entire career if he hadn't said those words. I mean, it's pretty simple, you know, you just let your concentration slip. As it was, I hit 367 in my career. Over 24 years. 367. I don't care if we got rolls or not. Get the food on the table. These people are driving me nuts. All right, look. We're all going to go in the dining room and sit down and eat. And we ain't going to be listening to stories that ain't being told. And we ain't going to daydream about Mara Lene Dietrich, and we ain't gonna be accusing nobody of nothing. We're just gonna eat, period. Am I clear? Good, now get up and get in the dining room. You should get upset, you know? Everyone should get upset. I mean, when Hitler was greasing the Jews, everyone was all like, Hey man, don't get me upset, you're bumming me out. It's my duty as a human being to get pissed off. Not that it makes any difference in the first place. Nothing ever fucking changes. You know, 50 years from now, we'll all be dead, and there'll be a bunch of suckers sitting in this exact spot. Drinking beer, eating pizza, bitching and moaning about the price of Oreos. And they won't even know that we were sitting here. And 50 years after that, they'll all be dust and bones. And there will be more suckers after that. And all these generations of suckers will try and figure out what the fuck they were doing on this fucking planet. And they will all be full of shit. It's all so fucking futile.